one spare tire is gone. You can clearly see I have just cut the spare tire holder compartment thingamabobber out, whatever you want to call it. Um, when I first got it, I figured I'd leave the spare tire in. I might be running a spare tire, but the more I thought about it, just the dumber of an idea it seemed. So that's the trunk, I mean the gas tank. And as you can see, that's quite a big of an area that's been taken up by where the spare tire was. So now that the whole compartment, wow, he was speeding or not, um, is completely cut out, I can now make a fuel cell that is much bigger. I'm gonna say it probably gave me, it might give me like five gallons, six gallons, maybe a little bit more. So that'll just be one solid tank. Well, I'm not gonna be using that one, I'll be making my own. Um, but I'll be able to put a lot more fuel in here since it's gonna be a lot more power, baby. Um, and I'm gonna need as much as I can get. So yeah, there we go. So, and I'm, I'm selling that. I know it seems kind of stupid to sell the trunk piece that I've just cut out, but a lot of Dotsons are rusted all the way around the bottom of the whole compartment, which as you guys have seen, it wasn't. It had some surface rust and I wire wheeled it and cleaned it all up down to the bare metal and then painted it with this bed liner. And that's, that's it. Other than that, it's perfect. So if you want it, DM me on Instagram or drop a comment and uh, there you go. So on to the next thing. rear diff and basically the entire rear suspension is out um, we're still on the control arms the diff drive shaft um, I'm keeping the original brackets and everything obviously because I'm gonna be doing different rear control arms custom BC racing suspension the whole the whole works and then I'm gonna start fabricating a mounting position for the LS400 rear diff that I have to fit on that back bracket and everything so I can rebolt it back up in here. Gas tank, that's getting sold today. And we are pretty much bare under there. I mean, I gotta strip off all the brackets and stuff. But other than that, I have the front suspension still in. We're gonna take that out and it'll be nearly completely gutted I'll probably leave the steering column and everything in there floor is all done I'm uh, I had to braise some spots in there um, and then I'm gonna grind that all off make it as smooth as possible grind all this off make it all clean again and put that first coat of bed liner in there like I did in the rear um, so we can start from the ground up being nice and clean. I mean, there's just a bunch of Surface rust. I'll just hit it with a wire wheel and Then it's ready to start working on the interior or any other mounting brackets I need to do so Cool on to taking that apart Two hours later, everything's all apart. Um, I know you dots and people who have taken apart these control arms were, uh, would love to see me struggle to get these pins out right here. But uh, I actually got pretty lucky with them. They, uh, they didn't take too much of a beating to get out. Mainly just a small sledgehammer and a piece of half inch rod and then I got a piece of rebar around here somewhere and just uh, man, I did not have to beat on it that long it's not really too mushroomed out but just set it in there and just tapped it right through and it came out fine um, this is all 
for sale. The uh, rear control arms. I mean, you can see there's like some minor surface rust. And that's it. I mean, other than that, they are in pretty damn good shape. Like, like I've said a million times, this car has been garage kept. So everything off of it is in pretty good condition. But uh, control arms, rear diff, drive shaft, and the axles and everything. All of that ready to go for 250, baby. So DM me on Instagram or uh, leave a comment in the at the bottom of this video and somehow get in touch with me if you want it um yeah i done any research onto the suspension um i'm looking at the bc adjustable coilovers and everything the bc racing adjustable coilovers um, but i'm gonna have to watch some videos on how to take these off without killing myself um and how i'm gonna be installing the new ones and I'm going to be getting a different hub for this because I'm either going to have to get custom rims made with an old Japanese center with the 4x114.3 bolt pattern or I'm just going to do a hub conversion to a 5x114.3 or 5x4.5 uh, so I can get a lot more modern looking rims and a 17x12.5 or 17x13 wide for the rear. But um, we shall see. So whatever I can get my hands on, I'll probably end up doing the hub conversion just because that's the best thing to do. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna continue to do now is I will finish grinding out the floor just because, make it all smooth as possible because it's kind of butchered right now and looks very fugly. And then I will start taking the front end apart and then once I got the front end off and everything, then I will put the mounting brackets from the original rear diff. I'll bolt the, the front and rear bracket back in. I, uh, I burned myself. Um, a front and rear bracket back in, and then I will make a mounting plate for the LS400 diff. Um, it won't be too challenging i say that with my fingers crossed um there's a four and a half inch difference between the rear bolting holes and the front bolting hole um, as opposed to this rear diff which you can see is significantly longer i mean there's a kind of size comparison versus that so um i'll have to make some weird custom brackets for it but I mean that's that's what you get when you're putting a CD09 to an LS400 diff and a 2JZ in a 260Z so um, it'll be fun and I'll be sure I'll be sure to film that cuz yeah I, I, again I'm sorry about last episode guys um, but we're, we're picking it back up we're definitely gonna be picking it back up so all right on to the next thing.